Thanks. Uh, yeah, as, I, as you said, my name is Somai Daj, and uh, my background actually is GIS, not biology. But uh, I've been working with MoveBank people for a while, and uh, the reason I'm standing here uh, talking about uh, M-Data system is that I was working with Gil Borer last year, and we were uh, developing the system. So the system is ready to use, and I want to, and I'm hoping to show you an easy way to use it today. OK, uh, before I start talking about MoveBank, uh, I would like to announce a workshop uh, on analysis of movement data in Vienna in September. So we are now um, accepting submission, like extend, uh, extended abstract, about uh, 1,500 words. And um, the workshop is organized by uh, me and my colleagues, uh, Jennifer and Sean, are sitting here. If you have any questions, just come talk to us. And uh, the submissions actually are due 1st of June for the extended abstract. And then we have a journal uh, special issue for uh, at the Journal of uh, GIS, International Journal of uh, Geographic Information Science. OK. So I don't have to introduce MoveBank or end data. You all know by now why it is important that we uh, need to connect movement data to environmental variables. Uh, so basically, the goal of this end data system was to uh, develop a tool that everybody can use. And it's easy to use tool to basically co-register animal uh, movement data with environmental data. And at the end, you as scientists, you can uh, basically explore the relationship between animal movement and their environment. So um, the paper that is published in uh, Movement Ecology, actually, uh, I, I put it in, um, so I created a word cloud for it. And as you see, talks about movement a lot and environmental variables and data. So we are talking about data a lot here in M data system. So uh, the system is based on MoveBank, as you know it. And um, basically, it's free to use for everybody for collaboration and sharing data. And uh, also, M data is free to use uh, for all. So uh, basically, M data brings uh, environmental data from different sources like NASA, NOAA, USGS, uh, and ECMWF weather data. And uh, if you want to see or read more details about this system, I um, refer you to the paper that we published about uh, this system in movement ecology, and Rand just pointed out. Here, I want to just uh, give a short uh, tutorial how to use the system. So um, basically, the system works on two supercomputers, one in um, Max Planck Institute uh, in Germany, and the other one in, at Ohio State University. Uh, so we collect environmental variables from different sources, and we um, basically annotate and movement data with environmental variables. So, so far we have a track annotation service in M data, and later on, uh, hopefully, we are hoping to add track simulation and knowledge discovery and visualization approaches. So, what is um, annotation? Basically, the, goals, uh, the goal of annotation is to um, annotate or attribute moving points over time with any environmental variable or any other variables. So we use interpolation for that. There are different kinds of interpolation techniques. I'm not uh, describing them in details here, but the idea is just if you have a grid of uh, raster data, environmental data, and then you have your moving uh, movement track, for each point along this track, we find out the data from raster grid, and then we interpolate the grid to get the, an interpolated value for the middle point. 
So we do that for the time before and after of uh, that moving point. Uh, and then we interpolate in time as well. The reason we do that is because the uh, resolution of the data differs from the movement data resolution in time and in a space. So we need to interpolate data. For that, we offer uh, inverse uh, weighted distance method, nearest neighborhood, and bilinear interpolation. Um, you can find out more details about this interpolation techniques uh, in, on MoveMag website. I'm going to show you where you can find this information here. OK, so here, uh, Sarah provided the, oh, OK, where is my web page? <laughs> OK, uh, maybe we do. Maybe middle of the screen. She put the PowerPoint up, and she is now mirroring the screen. Yeah, we should mirror the screen. That's the demo effect. <laughs> Got the windows. Yeah. <coughs> okay, but I want to show the web page. Okay. Okay, good. So uh, here in this web page on MoveBank, uh, you have the link on my slides. You can take a look later on. Uh, we have a set of information about different uh, um, interpolation techniques that you can read. And also, there are some references for that as well. And so let's continue. Oh. OK. So now I want to actually show you how does the system work. Before using it, you, of course, need an account. How many of you have an account in MoveBank? Good. So we don't have to create a new account now. Uh, and how many of you do you have a study in MoveBank? Good, good. So you need a study. Or you can use any existing study, which is free for everybody to use. Or um, you use your study to uh, annotate your, your movement data. So we need an account and we need a study. I already logged in to MoveBank, so I don't have to sign in. Uh, if you don't have an account, you need to sign in there. So I just open MoveBank and then. So here is MoveBank. You all are familiar with it hopefully. And if so first, in order to annotate a data, we need to go to tracking data map to find your study. Okay, so the first step is to find your study here. It takes a while. OK, there you go. So then you go here, studies, and you find a list of the studies, either that you own, or you are data manager, or you are allowed to actually edit and work with the data. OK? So here, I'm going to choose the Galapagos studies. Galapagos albatrosses, basically. And then, uh, unfortunately, here is the screen. Uh, OK. I want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> well, the inf data is over there. <laughs> <laughs> OK. No, no, don't. <laughs> well, it's over there. Yeah, 
It's maybe I should change the resolution of my Okay, there you go. So you see an end data menu, okay? And it has a start annotation request, show my requests, and about end data. So about end data basically is a help or more information about end data. And uh, show my request is actually when you already request that annotation, you can find out the results or the status of your request here. And at the moment, I'm going to start an annotation. OK. So what I did, I went to tracking data map, then studies, selected my studies, and here I started the annotation, right? So what you see is this screen. You can either select some of your um, movement tracks or birds, right? by ID, or you can select all, and either you can select animals or tag ID, okay? And uh, either you can include the outliers in your data or just uh, remove the outliers or disregard the outliers. So um, here, I'm going to select by tag and select some some of these uh, bird track, and then continue. Then you get to this uh, screen. I think I, it's better I use my presentation so you can see the whole screen better. So uh, you have two choices to uh, select environmental variables that you want to use. Uh, either select by source here or uh, select by type. If you know um, environmental <laughs> data sets, if you know remote sensing data sets by name, it's better to use this uh, tab, um, variables by, by source. But if you don't know the source, it's better to use by type. I show you how. And if you know nothing about these variables, if you sell, um, <laughs> click on this I icon, you can uh, basically get more information about that variable. OK, let's do it. Mm. OK. Oh, gosh. OK. OK, so um, either I can choose this or this. Here you see the types are basically easier to choose from, like air sur surface and vegetation, human population data, ocean topography, weather data. Okay, So we have different variables for each set of categories. For instance, weather data, uh, you can find evaporation, glo uh, global climate indices, uh, humidity data. So it's easier to navigate through by time if you don't know the uh, remote sensing data, like, uh, and also ocean data, sea ice data, sea, sea surface data. Or if you go uh, variable by source, for instance, if you select MODIS, you have MODIS land, MODIS ocean, and the name of variables. And uh, often you see this, the, the actual name of MODIS variables. If you Google it, you get all the information for it. or if you select this, if you click on this I, you get all the information about that variable, resolution in time and space, etc. So what you can do, let's go to, for instance, ocean and then productivity, color of field data, this ocean. So then you come to select the resolution. So we offer any uh, resolution that the uh, data source or data provider offers, we offer it here as well. So you can select different re resolution. This data happen to have only one resolution, four kilometer, eight day. So I select this one. So here it comes. And let me show you from my presentation file. Um, So you can either remove it, or if you select other variables, 
is going to be listed uh, in here. Okay, for instance, here I select um, wind data, uh, or maybe I go to weather and then wind. And wind speed, you can, for instance, if you select wind speed, we have data, different data providers for that. And you can select the one that you are, uh, you are familiar or just choose by random if you don't know it or uh, just research on that. And um, you have different resolution, of course, and let's do that. Surface, UV component and continue. So uh, when you first continue here, after selecting your variables, okay, um, you get to choose the interpolation method. Okay, so for some of the variables uh, that are like categories, we already removed the uh, other types of interpolation and we, are, we only give you a choice of nearest neighbor because it's the right uh, interpolation to use. Otherwise, you have three different choices of bilinear, nearest neighbor, and inverse weighted distance uh, that you can select. So the fastest would be the nearest neighbor interpolation, get, getting the nearest point and adding the attributes to your uh, point. Yes? Well, um, as a user, uh, I, I would say you need to read about, about different interpolation techniques, how they uh, actually work. But uh, so for inverse weighted distance, basically the distance of the grid points to your actual moving point matters. So the closer the distance is, the higher contribution of that grid point uh, has to your uh, point value, basically. So I would say it's a um, more uh, precise technique to use, uh, but it's also, uh, let's say, costly to use because it needs some computation. Um, so, well, uh, I would say bilinear or, yeah? Okay, so I, bilinear or inverse uh, distance uh, weighted approach are more accurate, but you can also use nearest neighborhood, but also it depends the, uh, on the resolution of your data. For instance, if you are choosing a um, low resolution data sets, you may want to use nearest neighbor, not to get uh, data from uh, further points. Right? Yes? Okay. So you need a default as well? No, <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Is Ross here? Okay. He could answer for you. So, uh, well, we can do that. Um, already we uh, added a, like a suggestion uh, list for what variable, uh, which variable you use what interpolation. And I believe this system actually uses that suggestions. For instance, if you use a categorical data, you don't get any other choices but nearest neighbor. So you know you should only use nearest neighbor, right? <coughs> With the R one of the nodes, mm -hmm. on those back it explain each of these in a much quicker way. Yes, and that's why. Uh, yeah, go so ahead. bilinear is the default, and then yeah. <coughs> yeah, well, <coughs> it, the system is changing a lot. I'm not. In, I mean, I don't know the latest status, but maybe yes. Uh, but also, the page that I referred you to has more information about info interpolation techniques. Okay, so you choose your interpolation technique. And for instance, here I chose nearest neighbor for all. And then you add your uh, email address. Usually by default, when you are uh, logged in in your account, it detects your email address and puts it there. But if you want to change it and send your request to other email addresses, you can change it there. And then you can um, 
uh, add a name for your request, which is very important actually when you are requesting a lot of annotation, it's better to choose a meaningful for, uh, term for it so that you can find it better later on when you are looking for it. Okay? Then you hit this uh, send annotation request and you get this back, okay? So this one says that you send the request named this one and the time was that when you send the request and the state or the status is new, a new request. And uh, you can have more information, overview of your annotation, what variables actually you choose and the details about those variables as well. So I show you uh, here, for instance, if you select overview, you see that. So these are the uh, variables that you chose. And then um, if you select details, basically you get more information about the variables um, that you chose. So I do that here to show you how it works. Uh, so uh, again, I choose nearest neighbor to get, get it done faster and not to burden the system now. Continue and then, um, yeah, send annotation request. Okay, so uh, here you have a refresh button. If you press it, the status of your annotation whenever it changes is shown here, or you can go to MF data and show my requests. So if I refresh it, it's changed to requested, meaning that it has been successfully submitted and you get an email. Uh, I'm not sure if you get an email at this point, but it has been re uh, submitted uh, successfully and you can wait to get that result back. So when the annotation is ready, uh, you get an email. Also, you can check the status of your annotation on the system. I show you how to do that. Do you have a question? Okay, so we provide everything that data provider provides. So we don't have a data uh, outside the period that actually data provider supports. And you can find out that information when you go to that variable, the I button next to that variable, if you press that, it says what is the data period, uh, the um, temporal period that we have data for. So you can find out that if you have like moving data before that or after that, that is not supported. So it, it, it is better not to choose that variable. Otherwise, you get a new data for that period. Um, yes, if the data is available, yes, you get the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I closed this window and I wanted to show you how um, to check the status of your um, annotation or how you can download actually your annotation. So if you go to show um, show my requests, you get different requests uh, that you had. This is delivered, meaning that I already downloaded that. This is available. So the annotation is just done. The one that I submitted, this one that I submitted right now, it is being done and transferred to me. I should have uh, got an email. I didn't check my email, but I can get the download link here too, okay? So then you get the data. So you download the data here, and the data comes in two files. One is the CSV of your annotations. So basically is the data that you had already uh, plus the annotation variables and one readme text file, okay? So I show you, here is the data that I just annotated. 
So I get to see, uh, well, if I go here, I have my annotation here. So I get a CSV file and a README. So if I open that CSV file, hopefully I can show you on this screen. Okay, you get your basically uh, movement data <coughs> that has event ID and visible actually talks about the outliers, if they are outlier or not, or error, um, data with error or not. What's that? And uh, time sum, location, longitude, latitude, and other information that was already in your data, right? And um, at the end of that file, you should get the variables that you requested. Okay, so I requested uh, Modis Ocean Aqua Ocean Color. Um, so the whole name comes there. You can change it or not. And uh, also the color field data that I chose. So these are the attributes that I annotated. You get it for each point that you had in your data. And uh, this is the read, readme text file. So you have some information. When did you uh, submit the request that, uh, and the access key? So if there is an error or there is a problem with your annotation, this access key is a unique identifier for your annotation request. You can so send an email to support uh, move at movebank.org with that access key and ask why the error happened or what is the problem with data. Yes. Gil is sitting there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had a picture for that too, but I didn't use that. Well, no, um, the system is ready and everything has been implemented, developed. Uh, so actually when you send a request, it automatically starts the annotation. What it does first, it downloads the data that it needs, okay? So for instance, you requested wind data and um, uh, supposedly, this wind data hasn't been asked with, uh, by anybody else, okay? So the system doesn't have the data still in supercomputer. First, it searched the inventory. Okay, nothing is there. Request the data from data provider, downloads the data, and then start annotating it. And everything is automatically. And you get an automatic email uh, from MoveBank saying that your data or annotation is ready. Sometimes when the data is large, when, the, uh, when you have requested many variables, it might take a while. So be patient because the downloads take time. Annotation doesn't take much time because Rolf did a great job to improve the system and make it very fast for you. But the download from data provider takes time. And sometimes the server of data provider is down doesn't work, you might even wait longer. So there are some other issues involved that you might get your annotated result later, but uh, just bear with it. <laughs> you hopefully get it soon. But this one it was quite fast, so uh, because I chose only three tracks uh, and I got it like a, in a second. And the reason I got it very fast might be because the data was in the server already, right? And uh, so if somebody requests something yeah, uh, and the server downloads, uh, the system downloads the data from the data provider to the server, the data is there for a while. So if somebody else uh, requests for the same data sets for the same time period, it's there and it's faster to annotate. Otherwise, it should wait for the downloads. Yes. Yes. Um, what I'm interested in, so, in the week before and the week after. Okay. 
So you need to create a like uh, points, simulated points for that uh, with the time that you need. And so these points are actually not your moving points, but the ones that you created. And yes, you can annotate that. Uh, OK, so well, you can uh, use simulation or uh, other uh, yeah, simulation techniques uh, for that to create points. Yeah, yes? Oh, okay. The question was if they wanted to annotate data before the actual and after time that they have data. So the answer is you need to simulate the data that you don't have and then annotate that simulated or virtu virtual track. Uh, and your question? Yes, uh, so we are providing two annotation methods. One is track-based or moving point-based annotation, and the other one is area-based. And the question was, I forgot, if we can annotate an area or not, okay, agreed or not. So yes, we can do that. I'm not sure if the system is ready for public yet, but it's there. Uh, it's going to be public soon. But yes, you can uh, annotate either tracks or regions. OK, any other questions? Yes? Are there any restrictions on how you can use the data as far as <clears throat> copyright or? Yeah, things like that. OK, so the question is, if there are any, uh, is there any <coughs> restriction on using the data? Yes, there is. Because any data provider, a provider uh, offers uh, some rules or copyright rules for, for their data. And for that, uh, when you get this actually readme file, I'm, I believe that the information is there how to cite the data. So first of all, the restriction is you cite the MF data uh, paper because you use the system. And plus, you might need to cite other data providers too. So you can find those information on the readme file if you need to cite any other data provider, any uh, website, or any papers by data providers. We give you that information. Any other questions? OK, so that's a readme file. And that's actually, you can see what interpolation technique you chose, and um, what are the uh, data sets for instance, if there is no data, what do you see on the data? None. Or what is the range of the data? What is the unit of the data? So when you want to use that data, actually, what is the unit? And uh, about data provider, how to cite the data, terms of use. You can find it in your readme file. Okay. And it's actually very important. It's a good question. So you need to make sure that you read the readme file before actually using it and publishing it in your papers. Okay. So uh, yes, Ron. So no, actually, we, uh, any parameter that we uh, make publicly available, we tested before. So uh, that is why we are uh, releasing the data one by one uh, and not all at once. Because uh, for each variable, actually, we annotate the data ourselves, and we check with actual data provider data, data from data provider. and. Um, we compare the results, if we do the annotation right or not. So we do act, uh, uh, quality control before releasing the variables. But I'm sure there are going to be some glitches or problems, so we really welcome feedback from users. Other question? OK. Um, how much time do I have? OK. Good. 
So uh, the data that you get, as I said, include these parameters that are already uh, in your data. And any additional uh, attributes that you request that comes afterwards. Then you get a readme text that talks about data uh, provider and annotated variables, the information about those variables that you requested. So it is important. I mean, it's very easy now to use this system and annotate data, but you should be mindful about what type of variable you choose. So uh, we can't tell you what variable to choose or what resolution to choose. You need to check your data, movement data. You need to be mindful about the resolution, uh, special and temporal resolution of your data set to choose a, a, a proper or suitable uh, variable for that. And as you notice, there are so many data providers, so many um, from the same variable, you might get data from the different uh, data provider. So we recommend that either you talk to uh, people who know remote sensing and environmental data set, or you do your own research before selecting uh, variables because we can't tell you for all these data what to choose, what not to choose, right? And uh, Ran yesterday showed when you choose a different resolution, uh, a, a environmental data from different resolution than your actual movement data, you might get a wrong result. So be mindful about that. And uh, yes, of course, interpolation techniques also matters and might change the result slightly. slightly. And um, if you have any questions, if you see any problem with the data, write email to support at movement.com. Unfortunately, I'm not anymore uh, there, but I, if you send me an email as well, I um, try to help. And if I don't know the answer, I ask my colleagues. And uh, another uh, remark, so my email address changed because I moved to Colorado Springs. So uh, I have my contact information at the end of these slides if you uh, need to contact me. So as I said, uh, for future extension, of course, we are adding more variables. As soon as we find a new data set, we add it to the system for you. But we also want to develop like visualizations and uh, movement pattern extraction methods uh, with open source libraries to be able to share tools with each other. So if you have any tools, any cool tool that you develop and works well, you might uh, want to contact MoveBank people and uh, try to add it to the system. That would be very valuable to share your tools as well. So um, now that I have time, I can um, shortly talk about, so how do we do the research with this annotated data? I believe so far that you're sitting in this uh, room, you have seen many um, different talks by different people, uh, so you know better than me how to use the data in your research. I just want to show you an example of um, uh, using uh, Galapagos albatrosses and showing how we actually assist the uh, movement of these birds uh, from Galapagos to Peru and back to uh, Galapagos to fit their trick. And I think Gil showed, so I don't have to, uh, I, I don't need to repeat everything again. But um, so we annotated the data with wind assistant and ocean productivity. And um, so what you see here, this is a, a simple visualization, a 2D and 3D visualization of, uh, I think, one track of albatross. And uh, the color shows here the tailwind uh, and wind support. So on the way to uh, Peru, you see that they don't have much wind support. But on the way back, they have a better um, tail support. This also, this visualization shows a space-time cube of uh, the same track. So basically, uh, here you have the location, and this is the time axis, and uh, the, the albatross starts the flight from here, going to Peru, and back to Galapagos, for, uh, staying there for a while, and back to Peru, and then 
back to Galapagos. So as you see, on the way to, uh, to the coast, they don't get much wind support. But on the way back here in this uh, lag, they uh, get better support. And here, I would like also to show you an animation that is created by my, one of my students at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. And uh, he used the same data set, annotated data set, to show uh, different uh, attributes along the track. So um, basically, there are two different uh, variables here. Uh, one is shown by the thickness of the line, and one is shown by the color. At the beginning, it, uh, you see the ocean MPP data annotated on the track. So basically, well, this is the track type. But if we go further, stuck. Okay. So here, you see ocean MPP values changing along the track. So the red uh, shows higher food availability for these birds, and the blue shows less food available. So as you see, they have to f fly to Peru to find higher ocean MPP or food. I don't know why it has stopped. Or maybe I opened that file, that's better. So first, it, uh, it is just showing the individual tracks with different color, and then annotating uh, the ocean MPP. So as you see here, these areas has higher food availability for these birds near the coast. And this actually shows the, the thickness shows uh, movement speed of these birds. And the color shows uh, tail and headwind. So when the line is thick and uh, red, it shows that the bird uh, had higher speed and the wind was actually helping, assisting the bird as well. And uh, you see that often on the way back to Galapagos. So you here, you can choose what variables do you want to visualize by thickness and color, and you can choose uh, uh, if you want to um, highlight the changes or if you just want to visualize the tracks or not. Mm -hmm. So this one is a combination of processing and Java, but uh, both are open source, so we can share the um, source of the data with you as well. So it's Java and processing. Processing is a very nice visualization tool, but it's based on Java. So if you want to develop something like that, you need to know Java a little bit. Yes? Well, um, so we looked at both tailwind and sidewind. And um, yes, we uh, saw uh, this presentation doesn't show sidewind. But in, I think in the movement ecology paper, we showed that both sidewind and tailwind effects. Yes, definitely. Yes, do you have a question? Yes. What do you mean? Uh, so the question is if it's possible to load custom data set. What do you mean by custom so data like, set? Let's say I created a, a data set myself that's not taking... Like virtual tracks? I'm sorry? 
virtual track, sim simulated like, uh, track? Let's say I wanted to take like multi-year averages of a data set, or if I wanted to resample at multiple scales, could I load that data set into EMD data so that then it would be available to annotate? So the thing is, um, so if you want to have your own track, a custom uh, track, anyway, you need to upload that first on MoveBank. If Move, uh, MoveBank agrees with the type or format of your data, then you can use EMV data. So um, EMV data is based on MoveBank and uses MoveBank data sets. Any other question? Yes. Um, so you annotate the data and you want to visualize it? Yes, of course you can. So basically this is, uh, it's not built in, but I can talk to my colleague and add it to the system, but yes, you can use that. So we use annotated data from Move MoveBank and then visualize it. So any data from MoveBank can be visualized like that way. Uh, not yet, uh, my, my student just developed this for this competition. And my, we might add it to the system later on if uh, you, you are interested. OK, so uh, any other questions? Yes. Uh, when you generate an annotation, yeah, you're not just familiar with the uh -huh. thing. But if, let's say there's a huge data set and you have multiple users. When you generate the annotation, is that associated with a user's account or with the data set? Or Good questions. Uh, so the question is if uh, the data is associated with your account or your request or how long does it stay in the server and if it's get deleted soon or not. So actually Rolf and Sarah can uh, answer this question better because I'm not uh, well informed of the latest development. But I can tell you that the data is not being deleted. It's going to stay in the server at least for a year or so. Um, but it's better if you download your data and keep it for, uh, in your repository. Otherwise, if it gets deleted, you have to repeat the annotation. But um, the data is associated with your account. So anytime you go there, actually, you see the annotation request that you had. You already downloaded it or not. And also, you get an email with the download link. You can just click there and get your data again. But I recommend that you download your data and keep it in your repository. Yes? Uh, so I have a question, Matt. If, if you got, make a data processing heavy request of uh -huh. half a dozen variables, ID, you know, IDW installation, and I get, I get my request, but my study is ongoing. I'm you know, continually getting data from Argos. Okay. I want to update you know, in a month or say, I want to update it to new, okay. a new annotation. Do, does the system have to? Okay, so the question is for data that is changing over time and you get more data, uh, what is the best way to annotate data or how long does it take to resubmit the same data set over and over again? The thing is, I, as I said, the download takes more time than annotation. Annotation is pretty fast. So if you had already requested that the same data, it's there on the server and it uses the same data, to re-annotate the data. So it's the part that you had requested before, it's going to be fast. But the part that needs that data download might take a while. Another uh, suggestion for you, because you are requesting different data sets from different sources, I would suggest use, uh, so uh, send your uh, requests in different parts. For instance, if you are requesting weather data, ocean data, vegetation data. Uh, send your request based on source, really. So because then it takes longer for the system to download data from different sources and get back to you. And if there is an error, it's difficult to track that error. So it's better if you select uh, more homogeneous data, let's say, or variables, like all ocean and submit your request, and then submit another request for vegetation, okay?
Yes. Only one point? One point. Did I say can you basically can you like on that? So the thing is you can you, uh, request for uh, area annotation or grid annotation. So the question was if I have one point, I want I wanna get a, a, a region around my point, the environmental data about the region around uh, that point. So yes you can do that, but you need to uh, select area based annotation. I don't think that is publicly available yet because we are testing the system still, but it will be soon, okay? So at, here I would like to thank you for your time and all my colleagues that are working on this system and uh, were actually the co-author of, uh, of the MoveBank uh, or MoveBank College paper. And at the end here is my, my current contact information. If you have any questions, uh, that I can help, just feel free to email me or contact me. Thanks a lot.